Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're putting a stick cover pass on a 2-inch Schedule 80 6G test joint using Lincoln Excalibur 7018 332nd rods at about 90 to 95 amps. But first, a quick, quick review on uh, going back to the very beginning. We want to cl clean all the mill scale off around anywhere near the weld joint, about a half inch back. I made these little quick spacers by grinding a flat spot on one side. I'm fitting mine up in the little trough here. You could use angle, channel, whatever, and really only need one spacer. But you see how easy they come out with the flat spot on there. And uh, here's a little quick review of the amperage ranges that worked for me on the root pass. It's about 70 amps here, 70 to 75 with a 1 8 gap. Here's a picture of it uh, too hot, keyhole kind of getting out of hand. Now the hot pass is called the hot pass, but a lot of times it's run at about the same heat or just a little hotter on TIG. Here I'm using a 1 8 filler about 90 amps for the hot pass. And I'm using a TIG finger because if I'm freehanding, I gotta have a place to prop and man, your fingers get to boiling if you don't have something uh, to help you out a little bit. And on two inch, a lot of people will walk the cup on two inch. I prefer on two inch and smaller to freehand. So the TIG finger really, really helps me. Now in future videos, I will do some uh, cup walking. I've got some six inch pipe coupons that, uh, that I'll do some cup walking on. And the machine I used today was this Everlast 160 STH stick TIG high freak. That means it's got a high freak start. You don't have to scratch start or lift arc. And it's got a plug for a foot pedal or a torch switch. For this video, uh, and for the root and the hot pass, I just used a torch switch. Didn't really need much amperage control. So I'm going to swap over to stick now by swapping the leads around, unplugging the argon and plug, and then uh, hitting the TIG stick button. And I'm, I'm ready to go stick. And once again, the arc on the TIG on this little sucker is about as smooth as you'd want it. But it's not capable of aluminum. It's strictly for doing steels and for stick welding. All right. Now, here's how I used to weld a 6G. I used to prop, get all in a bind like this, get all rigid, crock my arm up like that, even with leathers on. It makes a bunch of wrinkles on your elbow. Good place to trap fire and slag. And so whether, where that'll get you, or where it got me anyway, I passed a bunch of tests like that, but uh, there was, this, was, this is my prize right here for hanging in there. So you gotta be, you got to be tough if you're going to be dumb. And for the other side, not much better. It's still not very comfortable for me anyway. So here's, here's, here's what I worked on is coming up with some other method. It work, has worked very well for me. I choke up on the rod a little bit, bend it over, get all the flux ground off of there so I get a good, a good contact. And I bend the rod backwards like that a little bit. And then I prop with a pinky, either directly on the pipe or below it, and then a pinky to thumb. And I do a little pinky to thumb collapse as the rod gets shorter, and hopefully you'll be able to see that. But I'll speed it up here a little bit in a minute. I make little oscillations, like little a series of views like this. And the main reason is to slow the travel speed down a little bit, give me time to reposition my body. Because if I just zipped up there, with a small, small bead, that means I've got to really change position from bottom to top in a hurry. Now, I've sped this up so you can see, you can watch my hands. I'm twisting my wrist with that uh, electrode in there like that. I can keep the, the, the rod angle pretty close to right all the way around without ever getting in a bind. It has worked out a whole lot better for me than any other way I've, I've used. I'll do the same thing here. Prop pinky on the pipe and then pinky to thumb on the two hands and see how I go around and twist my wrist and it keeps the rod angle the same. Now see there I overlapped that a little bit more than I should have tying into that bottom. Not enough that it be a big problem but enough that if I did that every time I'd have a really heavy and lumpy area on the bottom especially if it was a multi-pass like a heavy wall joint where I, where I were, were, was doing five or six beads. Here I'm only going to do two but, and it's not going to give me too much problem, but it's not ideal. You can see my hands collapsing and you can see my wrist turning as I go around. Just twisting my wrist and that keeps the rod angle just about like I need it. And there you can see the tie-in. After we get the slag off of there, I prefer using a rough half-round file for cleaning in between passes rather than 
pecking and scratching with a chip and hammer and everything. But you see, it's got a little, a little bit of a lump there. If I, uh, you know, maybe overlapped a, a eighth of an inch less, it would have looked a lot better. So what I want to do now is offset the next tie-in. I don't want to tie in right on the same area, especially if you're running five or six beads on a cover pass. You want to stagger them, stagger the place you start about a half inch or so away from each other, and it'll kind of spread. You're going to have a little high spot where you make all your tie-ins on the dead bottom on a 6G, so you might as well spread them out a little bit, make it look a little bit better. There is a tiny little pour on the bottom there. It's probably because these rods weren't put in the oven after I opened them, and they've been open for several days. I just had to call it out because I knew someone else would. What you're doing here on that second pass, you're watching very closely top of that bead, keeping a nice tight arc and watching the top of that bead to avoid any undercut. You want to go slow enough and keep the arc tight enough that you fill it in. Now, if you do have a little undercut, you could probably come or come over there with another third light pass and, and wouldn't be that big of a deal. All right, here's some stuff I used. Again, the Everlast 160 STH. I did a previous video on here showing this little outside corner joint. You can see that is a pretty doggone smooth arc. No complaints on that. And then Lincoln Excalibur 7018 rods, 332nd, 2.4 millimeter. Slag comes off better than most. 2 inch Schedule 80 pipe from uh, Triangle Engineering. And I also used a little stubby gas lens kit so I could extend the electrode which helped me film this thing from CK Worldwide. Well, that is it for today. I do have plans on doing at least one more of these 2-inch with a uh, TIG all the way and also some cup walking on some bigger pipes. So stay tuned, weldingtipsandtricks.com.